Hello, and welcome to River Road United Methodist Church. We're very glad you're here with us this morning. My name is Tom York. I'm our Director for Student and Adult Discipleship, and welcome. We always like to extend a heartfelt welcome to any guests that are joining us for the first time, or perhaps you're coming back to worship with us this morning. Feel free to contact us. You can either click on the link here with our live stream, or you can go to our website, click connect, and we'd be glad to reach out and let you know, let you know more about River Road United Methodist Church and the missions that we're all a part of. We always ask everybody to sign in with our Here I Am Church app. Let us know you're here. See other people that are here worshiping with you today as well. Let's do a little light reading this morning. Reading about Van Gogh and Lent. Reverend Roger Dowdy is gonna be leading a wonderful study starting up on February 21st for about nine weeks, talking about Van Gogh and the inspirations that he had. Chapter one was all about how he lived a life of humbleness, a connection to nature, biblical values that really guided his artwork um, during the course of his life. So join Roger as part of our Linton small group series. We have a number of other offerings out there for you as well, but I ask you to plug in, learn something new, learn from your other churchgoers, and explore the mysteries of faith. Great to have you here today, and we look forward to our pastor preaching about reframe. What are we afraid of? How can we reframe that in a Christian context to overcome those fears and make a difference in the world that we have today? So welcome. We're glad you're here with us at River Road United Methodist Church, and I'll pass it along to Danielle for our children's message today. And now we'd like to welcome our young disciples to join me around the TV for a time of discipleship just for them. Hi, you all. Happy Sunday. Good morning. We're so glad you're worshiping with us today. So our Bible story today comes out of the book of Mark. And in our story today, we hear about a time where the disciples were in a really big storm and they need Jesus to help figure out what to do. So the disciples and Jesus had gone out on a boat and on a lake and the storm was huge. And you would think that the disciples would know what to do because they were fishermen and they're always on the water. But this particular storm was really big and really scary. So they woke up Jesus while he was resting in the middle of the storm. And Jesus said to them, why are you so afraid? Where is your faith? See, these disciples had seen Jesus perform miracles. They had seen Jesus' teaching. They knew all about Jesus so far. But they were really, really surprised, I think, when Jesus looked up at the storm and told the water and told the wind to be still, to be calm. And the disciples were pretty amazed. So you see, that was really great news for the disciples back then during the storm, but it's also really great news for you now because God still has that power. Jesus still has the power to calm storms inside of you. So when you feel anxious or worried or scared, just remember, the, the same power that Jesus had to calm the storms for the disciples, he still has that power now for you. You can use your Bible, you can use prayer, you can talk to Jesus about things that make you worried or scared, and he has the power to calm the storm inside of you, okay? So whenever you're feeling worried, whenever you're feeling anxious, whenever you feel scared about something, always remember that God gave Jesus the power to help you to make you feel better, to make you feel like he's always there with you because he is, okay? So let's say a prayer and thank God for Jesus and the power to calm the storms within us. Dear God, thank you for the power of Jesus. Help us remember to use our Bible and to use prayer to grow closer to you when we need your help when we want to praise you, or when we just want to tell you how much we love you. We thank you, we praise you, and we love you. Amen. All right, let's throw these prayers up. You ready? One, two, three, whoosh. Have a happy Sunday, you guys. you will be with me and when I'm standing in the fire I will not be overcome through the valley of the 
Hello, everyone. Let us overhear God's word to us this morning. This comes to us from Mark's Gospel, chapter 4, beginning with verse 35. That day when evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him, and a furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. And the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. This is the word of God for the people of God. 
Thanks be to God. Let's pray together. Gracious Lord, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. We thank you, God, for this account in Mark's gospel, and we ask that you will speak in and through into our lives to make the connections, to speak the insights that we need to hear in order to live more fully as your kingdom people. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, let's begin with some trivia. Um, what do you think are the top three fears held by Americans? Now, this is not fears of what's going on in the, the world stage or in our nation. These are more generalized. Number one, public speaking. Number two, if you said fear of heights, you're spot on. And number three is fear of certain insects or creatures, and I won't name them specifically because I don't want your palms to sweat or your heart to start racing. <laughs> Interestingly, also there was another study that came out in 2021 that talked about the most Googled fears in each state of the nation. So what was the most Googled fear? So um, for those who live in Maine, they most Googled uh, fear of germs or viruses and getting sick. Well, kind of makes sense these days, doesn't it? In uh, New York, it was fear of driving, which makes sense if you live in the city, for sure. For some of our more immediate neighbors in uh, West Virginia, the most Googled fear was fear of the dark. In North Carolina, uh, fear of the water. Um, but here in Virginia, we're a little more complex. Our most Googled fear was fear of failure. Well, today we are not gonna be asking Google a question. Uh, we are going to allow Jesus to ask a question into our lives because we are continuing on in our worship series um, called Reframe, Why 2022 Will Be Different. And 2022 can be different, not because we are assured that circumstances will be different, rather, 2022 can be different because we can be different. We can experience and see and respond to circumstances and situations differently. And in particular, our faith can help shape the way that we perceive and understand and respond to events as they unfold around us. Um, and we know this is possible because this is what we see Jesus doing all throughout his ministry. He met with people, he engaged with them, and then he invited them to understand and perceive their situations differently, to see them in a new light. And Jesus did this not by saying, okay, here's a list of seven steps to success, or here is 10 best ways to improve your life in 30 days. Rather, Jesus did this by asking people questions. And he asked questions so that people could overhear their own responses that they could, in a sense, come to see the truth of their life in that now, and that they could then hear ways that God was inviting them to live differently into their future. Because God knows that real change happens when we choose it back. God is always extending and initiating and reaching out, but real change happens when we participate with God. So today, the question that we're focusing on is the one we heard from Mark chapter four. Our question is, why are you so afraid? Now, fear is a tricky thing. On one hand, we need fear. We are biologically wired to respond to threats in order to keep ourselves safe, to self-preserve, and also to protect others around us. Our bodies are designed with spidey senses um, so that we can perceive threats. And then with a release of different chemicals like cortisol and adrenaline, we are armed to flight or to fight or to freeze. So in some sense, we have to say thank you, God, for fear, because it is a process by which our bodies seek to keep ourselves and others safe. And sometimes excitement can feel like fear. It can be difficult to parse them out when you're about to go onto stage to play that part in the school play, <clears throat> or you're about to ask that person out for coffee. 
You know, sometimes it's difficult to know uh, what the difference is between excitement and fear. Um, you might have some of the markers of fear, but really, when you're about to start that new job, you're excited. In his book, The Big Leap, Conquering Your Inner Fear, Gay Hendricks says it this way, excitement is like fear, but with the breath. Because when we're afraid, we often forget to breathe. We hold our breath when we are afraid, which is a powerful metaphor to remind us that unchecked fear can distance us from our very breath, from that which brings us life. Because sometimes we also can get caught in a loop of fear or in our responses to fear without realizing anymore the actual fears that are motivating us. Fear, like everything else, can become a habit in our lives where we don't even remember the actual fear that is motivating us or shaping our thoughts and actions. We just know, for example, that we are sitting in a puddle of cortisol or that we're now in a downer of an afternoon shaded by negative thoughts or heightened anxieties. We can lose sight of the very thing that has taken our hand and led us into the land of worry or an irritability that snaps at those closest to us. Which is, it's why it's important to know how fear is functioning in your life. It's why Jesus asks the question, why are you so afraid? Now we know that Jesus asks this question to his disciples while they're in a boat on the Sea of Galilee. Now the, the scripture, the Bible calls it the Sea of Galilee. We would probably understand it more like a lake. It is 18 uh, miles long and eight miles wide and it's a freshwater um, body of water. But here they are, they're in a boat. They are going to the other side of the Sea of Galilee when a furious storm kicks up. So the waves kick up um, because of the heightened wind and they find themselves here in a literal storm. And the disciples are having an understandable response to this real threat. Um, they are afraid and then they call out, they're like, where is Jesus and all this? And Jesus is asleep in the, the stern, which is the back of the boat, apparently tuckered out from a day of ministry. And he is apparently a really, really deep sleeper, or more likely, um, unafraid of the threats occurring around him. So they wake Jesus up and they say, do you not care if we drowned? And so what does Jesus do? Uh, he gets up and he rebuked the wind and he said to the waves, quiet, be still. Which reminds you of Psalm 4610, right? Where, where the psalmist says, be still and know that I am God. And then the wind died down and it was completely calm. And then when the disciples have had a moment for their breath to even and their heart rates to slow down, Jesus asks them, why are you so afraid? And I think he asked this question for two reasons. First of all, he wanted them to really know what they were afraid of. Now, of course, you could say, obviously, they were scared of harm. They were scared of the boat filling with water. Um, they were afraid of losing their own life or the lives of friends. And of course, this is real and this is a significant fear for many people, this, this fear of loss. Um, but we also know that some of the men in the boat, some of the disciples were fishermen. So, you know, this was not their first storm. This was um, not their first rodeo, they must have been out in other dodgy weather moments. So Jesus asked them to go even deeper. Why are you so afraid? Maybe they were afraid that Jesus didn't care about them. That God, when they really needed God, was not going to help them. And so therefore, they really were alone in the universe. Uh, maybe, at least for the fishermen in the boat, they felt scared that they would appear worthless or incompetent in front of Jesus or the other disciples, that they would, in a sense, let the team down when others needed them most. Yes, you know, in regards to fear, there are the surface reactions, the anger, the yelling, the nervousness, the insomnia, the need to numb out, but underneath, there is fear. You know, some of you have heard me talk about the Enneagram, and it's a 
personality awareness tool. Um, and so the Enneagram is a vehicle for greater self-awareness, um, self-understanding. It's designed to aid you in your walk with God and in your walk with yourself and everyone and everything else. And um, in the Enneagram, there are nine types. So you're one of nine uh, personality. You can take an assessment or read the different bios on each of them and decide which one feels most like home. Um, type one is the perfectionist, type two, the helper, type three, the achiever, type four um, is the individualist, type five, the observer, on it goes. Um, and every single type has a basic desire and a basic fear. And some of the basic fears, for example, are fear of being wrong, fear of being unloved or unwanted, fear of being worthless or incompetent, fear of chaos fear of not knowing, fear of deprivation, fear of being controlled, fear of being confronted. And these are some core fears that if you follow the dots of why one is angry or worried or scared, it also often will lead you back to a core fear. I remember being in a small group focusing on the Enneagram and someone said something like, but we've all had all these fears. And I said, yes, that's true. But I think what the Enneagram helps you realize is there might be one though that is particularly familiar, that you kind of look in the eyes of this core fear and say, oh, I know you. You and I, we go way back. Why are you so afraid? So often we stay in the shallow end of our fears. We focus on the outcomes. We focus on the worry or the irritability or the anger, and we may even go deeper and say, I'm frustrated with this, or I'm sad by this, but go even deeper, what's at stake? Why are you so afraid? What's core? Do you know how this core fear plays out in your life, in your relationships, in your work? For example, on someone whose core fear is being worthless, they might work relentlessly all the way to burnout or in order to achieve, they might be willing to fudge this or deceit about that. They might blur the ethical lines in order to reach success. Or if someone's core fear is being unloved or unwanted, they might stay in a relationship that is not mutual or is disrespectful or even destructive or unsupportive because they think that they will never find what they have come to call love again. They might settle for less than what God holds for them because they are motivated by the fear that they are unwanted. Or if you really wanna see a great example of core fear, check out the new Disney animated movie called Encanto, uh, whose soundtrack is playing in my house like 24 seven right now. Um, and it's written, the music is uh, largely written by Lynn manuel Miranda who wrote the musical Hamilton. But it's about a family living in Colombia, the Madrigal family. Um, the family, they have all received magical gifts that they are to use to bless the town and build it up, um, the town around them. And one of the characters is Luisa, and she has received super strength. And I mean, she is tough. Uh, she straightens the foundations on houses and halls, herds of wayward donkeys. However, she's been stressed lately because there are problems with the family, among the relationships, there are some things they don't talk about. You know, every family got some dysfunction, amen? But her sister knows about these things and she's been stressed because she's trying to hold it all together. But even with her strength, um, her eye has been twitching lately. And this is sort of her stress tell. So her younger sister, Maribel, who's trying to uncover the truth within the family, um, asks Louisa about these issues and the eye twitching, to which Louisa says, I'm fine, and her eye twitches. Everything's good, and her eye twitches. But then she goes on to sing a song called Surface Pressure with lyrics that start, I'm the strong one, I'm not nervous, I'm as tough as the crust of the earth is. But under the surface, I feel berserk as a tightrope walker in a three ring circus. Under the surface, I'm pretty sure I'm worthless if I can't be of service. Who am I if I can't carry the ball? Who am I if I fall? See, that's her core fear. Who will I be if I'm not strong enough? 
And at first, she's not acknowledging her fear or the ways that it's being lived out in her life and in her family. So it's going to come out in another way, which for her, it comes out within her body. You know, fear is a part of the human condition. And at times, it is needed. It's, it's wired into us. However, if fear is the one driving the boat, if fear is our primary unnoticed, unchecked motivator, it can lead us into destructive paths and behaviors and choices. So Jesus asks us this question so that we'll, we'll really think about what is the fear that motivates? And I think then that leads us to the second question that Jesus, why Jesus asks us this question. And it's, it's a compendium with another question, where is your faith, which we'll focus on next week. But he asks this question so that the disciples can reflect on that and that then Jesus can come and be with them in their fear and help to calm and address the core fear. Quiet, be still. You know, Jesus asks us to be aware of what fear, what core fear is occurring in our life so that he can come in and help to address and quell and calm the fear. Now, this, this calming, this quiet, be still, this Jesus entering in to break the power that fear can have in our lives, it's not just a one-time prayer. It is an ongoing, at times, lifelong process of prayer and practicing self-awareness, of uh, having trusted people in our lives that we can talk these things through. If you're a young adult or a teenager, you know, having trusted adults to talk through what you are scared, what you fear. I mean, at times even talking with a counselor about how fear, the role fear has in our lives, but it is a lifelong process of sanctification, loosening fear's grip through the power of the resurrection and learning to live greater in that trust that Jesus is with us, quiet and be still. So, so that Jesus into the fear, for example, of being wrong, Jesus says, you will be. And blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, not rightness, but righteousness, for they will be filled. Into the fear of being unloved or unwanted, Jesus says, you are my child, my beloved, in whom I am well pleased. Into fear of being worthless or incompetent, Jesus says, strive first for the kingdom of God and everything else, all your other strivings, will find their equilibrium. Into a fear of chaos, Jesus says from Psalm 46, God is our refuge and our strength. Even as the earth is shaken, even though the mountains are carried into the sea, I will not fear. Into our fear of not knowing, God says, for I know the plans I have for you, says the prophet Jeremiah, plans to bring you prosper and not harm. Into a fear of deprivation, Jesus says, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, what you drink, your father knows what you need. Into a fear of being controlled, Jesus says, you will come to know the truth and that truth will set you free. Into a fear of being confronted, uh, words from Joshua, have I not commanded you be strong and courageous? Do not be frightened nor dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Friends, we do not want fear to be in the driver's seat. And that's why um, I think that during the storm in our account from, from Mark's gospel, gospel, where is Jesus during the storm? He's in the back of the boat. But then the disciples in their fear they ask for his help and they don't do it in a prettily packaged way. They cry out, do you not care? But Jesus responds. And so I imagine when he says, quiet, be still, he is standing at the front of the boat saying, all right, fear, come on, scoot over, get out of the driver's seat. I'm gonna take it from here. Because having Jesus in your boat it makes a real and daily difference in terms of how you handle fear so that it's not handling you. Our fears acknowledged to Jesus can lose their power 
in the face of the one whose power is love and whose way is peace. Perfect love drives out fear. And that's why it's so important to have the courage to respond to the question Jesus asks us. Why are you so afraid? Come Holy Spirit into our lives and minds and hearts. Give us this courage and we allow you God to ask questions into our lives so that we might know greater health and wholeness and work for your justice and peace in the world. Amen. Now we come to a time of prayer where we lift our concerns and our praises to God. We invite you to share any prayer concerns or praises that you have by typing them in the comments at this time, and it will be our honor to pray for you this week. This prayer is called the prayers of the people because it represents our collective prayer to God. And so we will make this a collective prayer by responding together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, we are thankful for this unique way that we can be together for worship. We know that no matter where we are, we belong to you and we belong to one another. God, you are at once far above us, seated in heavenly glory, and yet as close as our next breath. The psalmist has said, those who know your name trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. We come seeking you this morning, trusting in your name. Thank you for all the ways you prove your love for us over and over again. We admit that we often lose our way, tossed around by waves of uncertainty, fear, selfishness, the need for control, and a desire for things that are not of you. Forgive us for the ways we have dishonored you and dishonored ourselves in our thoughts, words, and actions. We are ever grateful that when we confess, you are faithful to forgive. By your spirit, empower us to be holy even as you are holy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As you were present with your disciples on the stormy sea, Jesus, be present with those who are overwhelmed by life circumstances. Comfort those who are grieving, strengthen the weak, bring peace to those who live in fear, and increase joy in the lives of those who are sad or lonely. We pray for those who are sick in mind, body, or spirit, that you would bring healing and restore strength. Be with those who care for the ill and dying. Provide ways for them to mourn and grant them rest as they give of themselves to care for others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our elected leaders, for those who govern us in this community, our state, and our nation. Guide them in the way of truth and justice and give them wisdom to make decisions on our behalf. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this church family, for the ministry of River Road United Methodist Church, as we seek to love people to life. We ask for energy, endurance, and imagination so we can continue to share the message of your life-changing love with others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now with one heart and one voice, we offer this prayer in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us for worship in this way. We are so glad that you chose to connect with us and with one another. May you be strengthened by the scripture and music and prayers that you have been part of today. And as you go forward into this day and the days to come, may your fear be reframed 
by your faith in Jesus, the one who has the power to calm every storm. Amen.